Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let campaign assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, June 2nd. I'm Mark Dent, here with Juliet bennett Ryla, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to talk about Neom, which is Saudi Arabia's $1 trillion city. You might have heard about it over the last few years, and you're probably also wondering, is it ever going to happen? We're going to discuss. But first, let's talk about everything else that's happening in the world of business and tech. Starting off with Google, the company is investing in a text-to-video AI startup called Runway as part of a $100 million funding round that values Runway at $1.5 billion. So the goal here for Google is to get Runway to use its web servers, taking away some of that valuable money and space from Amazon Web Services. In other big tech news, Mark Zuckerberg just announced Meta's latest mixed reality headset. It's 40% slimmer and called the Quest 3. Zuckerberg's announcement comes just days before Apple is set to reveal its own very hyped headset. On to dating. Match Group's latest dating app is called Archer. It's a social first app for queer men. And the company says that all launch features will remain free even after subscriptions are introduced. Speaking of subscriptions and things of that nature, streaming rivals Netflix and Paramount Plus are joining forces for a new discounted streaming service bundle. It's going to be offered exclusively through Verizon. Finally, there's some new data on billionaires. The data firm Altrada has just released a study showing that the median age of the world's billionaires is 67. Fewer than 10% of the world's billionaires are under age 50. So they are getting old, slash, it just takes you a lot of years to make a billion dollars. Some of those younger billionaires, like Mark Zuckerberg, are far more likely to have made their fortunes in tech. But for the billionaires over 50, finance and industry are most likely to be the root of their wealth. All right, let's move on to our top story, which is about Saudi Arabia. The country over the last few years has been trying to, you know, come up with new revenue streams as well as camouflage its numerous human rights issues. One reason for all this is because oil, which Saudi Arabia has a lot of, is expected to be, uh, you know, utilized less often in the future. The country itself has plans to try and use less oil. So the result of kind of all this is Saudi Arabia trying to throw a lot of money around in hopes that they'll start making money in different ways. And one of those ways that you're probably well aware of is the Live Golf Tournament, which they started over the last couple of years. Saudi Arabia has also been investing in green energy and environmental projects. And it's really been trying to open itself up as a hub for tourists. And this is what we're going to talk about because their biggest bet when it comes to diversifying their economy and making more money and attracting tourists is this planned utopian city called Neom. And Juliet, you made this really good comment on Slack that I want to bring up first, is that when you think of Neom, it reminds you a little bit of the movie Infinity Pool, which was released (laughs) just a few months ago. What is this Neom? And let's start with this comparison. So I don't want to give the whole plot away of this movie if you haven't seen it. It's a film by Brandon Cronenberg, who is the son of legendary body horror master David Cronenberg. So It's definitely kind of a horror film. It gets a little gross, a little gooey in parts. But essentially, it's about this place where tourists can go, wealthy tourists, and kind of just get away with stuff. Uh. And it has, one could say, a negative impact on the people who are already living there, although it's kind of a statement on class and what you can do with money. And Neon kind of reminded me of that because it's sort of billed as this like utopian tourist destination where you can have all these incredible experiences if you can afford it. And yet at the same time, it's in this country where there are all of these concerns, like you said, around human rights issues. And there are also some issues with people who are already living where Neon is supposed to be, who are definitely not being treated very well. So 
just a lot of weird dystopian things happening. Right, right. And so we'll unpack some of those issues. But I, I guess first, what exactly is Neom and is it starting to come together yet? Yeah, that's a great question because it seems like a lot of things and also nothing. It's hard to explain. Even some of the numbers I was looking at were contradictory depending on what source you were looking at. But at its core, Neom is sort of billed as this new utopian city tourist destination. It will run heavily on renewable energy and be supposedly a sustainable city. There's a lot of very interesting ideas about how parts of the city will work. Hmm. What we know about it is it's obviously located in Saudi Arabia near the Red Sea. It's on over 10,000 square miles of desert. It will operate outside of Saudi Arabia's government and it'll have its own taxes, labor laws, judicial system. That's probably key because a lot of tourists maybe don't want to conform to Saudi Arabia's laws. Really? So it's in Saudi Arabia, but not of Saudi Arabia, I guess. Right. And I think the reason why this is able to happen is because this is the vision of Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not just some random guy that's like, I want to make this thing. It's the Crown Prince. Yeah, it's kind of like its own little thing. There are supposedly going to be 10 districts or 10 regions, four of which we know about. One is an island that will have hotels and yacht marinas kind of tailored towards someone who has a yacht or a super yacht and wants this extravagant experience. One of the attractions is apparently you can dive and explore the reefs and the wreckage of the Red Sea, which sounds pretty cool. The line is really interesting. It's a continuous building. So just Hmm. imagine a building that's literally a long line. There are mixed reports on how long it is. Yeah, I was going to say, how long are we talking about? Somewhere between 100 And 130 miles. Okay, wow. And in this one huge building, they want to house 9 million people in a car-free smart city run by robots and AI, sustainable, renewable energy. So that's an interesting part. And the city is just one big building, though. Yes. Like they're calling it a city, even though it's just a large building. Yes. They're calling it a linear city, which is really interesting. Reminds me of like a New York railroad apartment, I feel like, or perhaps just the opposite. It's one giant long hallway. I don't know. That's what I'm picturing, at least. It's just the Snowpiercer train. (laughs) Yeah. That's it. (laughs) Then there's a floating industrial complex called the Oxagon. It's shaped like an octagon. That's for manufacturing and research. And then there's also an outdoor skiing destination, mind you, in the middle of the desert. And that is going to play host to the 2029 Asian Winter Games, supposedly. Mm. So all sorts of other futuristic things. If you want to do a deep dive, you can look at all their videos. They want to have these air taxis, you know, sort of like flying EV helicopters that get people around. There's just a lot of stuff going on. It's a very ambitious plan. Yeah. And one of those regions that you were talking about, mm-hmm. like the island for yacht marinas and blah, 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 all that really super wealthy people kind of stuff is scheduled to open like next year, 2024. Yeah. So this is supposed to come together kind of fast. I assume that there are already people working on this. There are people, you know, Mm -hmm. living probably in some of these areas. And there's uh, apparently been quite a bit of concerns, you know, given that this is Saudi Arabia. What are some of those concerns that people have voiced I'm going to go in order of like least to most concern, maybe. (laughs) Privacy experts are pretty concerned about the smart city's surveillance and data collection capabilities. There was an article about Saudi Arabia had met with some Chinese companies that do some of that surveillance tech. And they're like, how much are you giving up to live in this city, basically? Experts are also worried about the environmental impact of building this thing. Also of having a ski resort in the middle of the desert, you know, where you're going to have to somehow make it snow a lot. I mean, this is a colder climate than the rest of it, but still like there are some environmental concerns. And as you said, there are employees that are working on it right now. Some have left Hmm. accusing Niam of having this hostile work environment, all sorts of allegations. And the CEO is not really doing himself any favors here because he once said, it was quoted in the Wall Street Journal, that he drives employees like slaves. And when they drop down dead, I celebrate. So if that's what you're saying out loud, (laughs) I can't imagine the environment not out loud. And the worst thing, and this is really grim, the UN has denounced Niam, saying that they are forcing people, members of the Hawatat tribe, who are already living there where the city is supposed to be built, out of the area. And those that don't want to leave have had some pretty bad things happen to them. One member was killed by Saudi forces. They opened fire on him. They said that he shot first. His family members and other members of the tribe were like, no, he didn't even have any weapons. That's not what happened. So there's a lot of controversy there. 
Three people who refused to leave have been sentenced to pretty long terms in prison, and three are scheduled to be executed. They've been charged with a more severe crime, but basically their argument is we don't want to leave our home and you're making us, and now they're scheduled to be sentenced to death. Yeah, so this reminds me a little bit of Qatar, where the World Cup was hosted last November, Mm -hmm. and there were years of reporting because, you know, it was like a 12-year, I think, project to get Qatar ready for the World Cup, and it involved a lot of human rights abuses, and it involved labor Mm -hmm. issues, it involved people dying, and this really strikes me as something similar. That World Cup, it obviously happened, it took a long time, a lot of people thought it would never get there and that, you know, FIFA Mm -hmm. would move it. Is there any talk uh, about that with NEOM? Do people in some ways see all of these issues and think that this whole thing's just never going to happen? I think there's a lot of skepticism about if the project will ever fully manifest, just even be built. I mean, we're talking about a ton of money that's supposedly being invested and not a lot of details. One trillion dollars, right? I mean, yeah. And I had read earlier reports that called it a $500 billion city. And then Bloomberg just came out with a new one calling it a one trillion dollar city. And I can only imagine that cost is going to go up from there. So there's a lot of skepticism as to whether this is really going to happen and then what it's really going to be like to actually live there. And then, of course, if people are even going to want to go, I think a lot of people might feel uncomfortable going to a country where, like, let's say you're a queer couple. Do you want to go to a place where you know you may not be welcome? I think Russia obviously has more problems now than it did a few years ago, but I think you know, there's some, do I want to go visit Russia when I know that I might not be welcome there or I might be persecuted there? Right. I mean, it's it's just really hard to say. I know that the opening date is supposed to be close, but it just feels so far away and so ambitious and there's so many things going on. Right. There is also, for people who kind of follow these sort of utopian city kind of experiments, which seem to pop up more often over the last few years, I feel like, than they did just 10 or 20 years ago. There's another supposed desert utopia that might just be in the U.S. from a billionaire, not a prince or anything like that. Yeah, so we actually wrote about this in 2021. An ex-Walmart executive, Mark Lore, wants to build a city, also a desert utopia, pegged at $400 billion. It's called Telosa, and it would be sustainable, pedestrian-friendly, kind of has an interesting business model where Lore buys the land, donates it to a community endowment, and then residents lease it. And then that income and appreciation funds the city and services like education and healthcare. And they want to open by 2030. They want to have residents moving in by 2030. But I don't know how that's going. Yeah, I I was just trying to check it out, see if there was any hot news items about Telosa. And there has been nothing for months. So uh, I guess it could still be a long, long road for them, too. Right. And I, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm just harping on other countries or these billionaire pie in the sky ideas. I mean, I think. These kind of issues are the things we're going to see with any major push for a city to do something when it has other problems it needs to fix first. And I say this as someone who lives in Los Mm -hmm. Angeles. The Olympics are supposed to be here in 2028. That's not that far off. And, you know, there's a lot of talk here about how is the city going to house all of the unhoused people that we have? How is it going to make Metro, you know, the combination of the rail and the bus able for all of these tourists to be able to use it and get around? And there's a lot of doubt that we're going to be able to do that in a sustainable way or in a way that's not just basically putting people somewhere else temporarily so it looks like we solved our problems when we didn't. Yeah, planning is is not easy. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will just keep our eyes on what's going to happen with all these utopias. Mm-hmm. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to The Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We have a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, go get signed up at thehustle.co slash email. Catch you next week. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. 
Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win a lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.